Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the nasally drone of Off the Cut, <laughs> episode 34. It's not just Zach droning tonight, it's me, because I got a stuffed up nose. But up in, up in Canada, today is known as Tuesday, October 11th, 2022. But here in Ohio, today is respectfully dedicated to the food of the day, sausage pizza. Okay. Not bad. Yeah, I'm down, with, bad. I'm down with that. I'm down with that. It's uh, it's kind of specific, but I like a good sausage pizza. So, here's my thing about sausage. Oh, what'd you crack? Is it a seltzer? I just got my. Uh, yeah. So here, hold on. Let me show you real quick. This is like a uh, generic grocery store brand here in Canada. President's Choice. Oh, okay. Yeah. Lemon. So is that just lemon? Just lemon. Okay. Just lemon. Okay. It's, it's you know we're tough times over yeah. here. I couldn't find the ahas. I couldn't find the bubbly. Yeah. So now. I'm, I'm slumming it with just the grocery store lemon brand. It's seltzer for the people. Exactly. Exactly. Although it's the same price. It's like, you know, a, a 12 pack of this is like four fifty, and then the brand name bubbly stuff for the ha is like five bucks. Mm. Well, that wasn't a very satisfying Chris, one. That wasn't bad. It sounded good on mic. Got the, uh, oh, yeah, ASMR. I've got the watermelon <laughs> I'm going with tonight. Again, the nice. Kroger brand. Oh, generic Kroger brand for this one. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Have you had the watermelon bubbly? Oh, it's lovely. Mm-hmm. You can mix it with a it little vodka and a, a splash of lime juice. Oh, phenomenal okay. cocktail. Right. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll remember that for Workbench Conference. We're going to be mixing up some drinks. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. we should have a, if we able, we should try to have a podcast every night, kind of like recapping what happened that day. Oh, that's a good idea. But it that's might a just idea. be a drunk would- ramble. <laughs> I was even thinking to shoot like a vlog style YouTube video while I was there. That could be interesting. Yeah. It could be yeah. interesting. I did that the first year and it was it was fun. Although that was like I think that was like my second or third YouTube video ever. So got wow. like no views, obviously. But you know, I think it could be fun, like, you know, even even that video, like there was just people like, you know, big YouTuber woodworkers yeah. and stuff like that people be like oh i see like you know bourbon moth in the background oh i see uh the woodwork wood whisperer in the background everybody's so like where's eric from spensley design co and then everybody's I know, like, the, the hell are you comments. talking about yeah I, I deleted all those comments i don't censor many comments on my videos You're but like, those i'm ones. not giving this guy free publicity <laughs> speaking of free publicity i probably ought to get this shirt out of frame let me oh uh, i think you're good i think you're good i can't a see little... there it is don't want to give any brands free publicity. I'm hanging out the bottom of the screen tonight on the live stream. Yeah, you've got an interesting little uh, bulkhead above your door that I've never seen before. Oh, baby. Don't even get me started. The The construction of this apartment is bananas. There's nothing there. That's not an air vent. What? Yeah. No, it must nope. be. It is, but is not it just like vent. a stylistic choice, the I guess. Knows. There's nothing that- stylish about this place there's a lot of extra work that would go into making a bulkhead like that like right. it would have been much simpler to not have it <laughs> yes right so what's anybody's not watching the live stream what he's referring to is there's a corner of of our second bedroom that literally just looks like somebody was like 90 degree corner here nah, nah. let's make it 45 <laughs> but only on the top two feet yeah, it's like just above the door frame. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And then there's also it looks like there's like a little build out where the closet starts. Like, is there like twelve inches to the side of the closet, and then oh, like a little? Yeah, but it only bump it out? only bumps out about two and a half inches. Yeah, that's just that sounds like a real pain in the ass to frame. Like, I, I was framing a right. house today, and I'm thinking right. like that doing stuff like that is super annoying, and you only do it if you absolutely have yeah. to. You want every room to be a, a perfect rectangle. Exactly, not yeah. perfect rectangle, but you get what I mean. Only but four as close sides. as possible. When uh, my dad bought his house, you know, probably oh God, 15, 20 years ago, something like that, and I was still living at home with him, one of the first things he did was go just completely ape on all of the oh, yeah. bulkheads in it. Yeah. Like he just started, you know, like re- du- redoing duct work, he started redoing runs, and he like cleaned up so many bulkheads in the house. And that was like the first renovation he did when he got it. The framing in this place. And also keep in mind, it's one of these like newer apartment complexes where they build the whole complex in like three days. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It is just filled with all sorts of like, who the hell would have ever done it like this? And if you look at the wall, like it's wavier than the ocean, man, it's 
<laughs> awful. And they go for speed, not for design or yeah, comfort. Right, right. <laughs> But uh, what, sausage, I don't really care about sausage pizza. We've, yeah, we've discussed pizza a lot. Let's skip that. You know, it, some something new coming up, I don't think we've really talked about on the podcast. I think we briefly mentioned it on the after show, perhaps, mm-hmm. is that in March, we were just talking about this before yep. uh, before we started recording. March, you and I are both going to WorkbenchCon. Yes, we are. Well, I don't officially have my ticket yet, but I will get it and I will be going. Now, why? Why don't you have your ticket, Zach? Uh, because the Workbench Conference website, when you go to, so you know when you, you you go to buy something online, they ask you for your shipping address and your billing address. Yeah. Uh, because I'm a Canadian, as many of you know, and uh, when I went to enter my Canadian address, it would not let me. There's no option for postal code or my province, and thus I can't enter my credit card info because it'll bounce back because the billing address doesn't match what's on file at the credit card company. Right. Right. So I sent them a little nice little email like, hey, what's going on with this? Are you guys fixing it? And they – sorry, seltzer burp. Um, and Get they said, out. yeah, we're working on it, and we'll let you know as soon as we fix it. Yeah. And, you know, I – let's air a grievance – Workbench mm-hmm. con. You guys are mm-hmm. making like six hundred bucks a ticket. I mean, how many yeah, these, people you think are going? At least a thousand? Uh yeah, probably. Probably something like that. Yeah, like a half million bucks right there, right? right? Pay yeah. someone a thousand dollars. And that's on the high side. Fix yeah. your website. It looks awful. <laughs> it's so bad. You could you could realistically get like a high school student to do it for 50 bucks and it would be an improvement over what's the current. What was it when, <laughs> when you were texting me about not being able to get your ticket? What did you say? It was like a, a unpaid intern could have done a better yes. job. Or <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> so Somebody true. would be willing to do a better website just for the exposure to say that they did it. Right. Put it on their portfolio. Exactly. Exactly. Pay somebody with a ticket. I'm sure there's somebody who's a YouTuber or an, Instagrammer who would be willing to do a little bit of web work in exchange for a five, six hundred dollar ticket. Or go to squarespace.com slash Zach Builds and get started with your <laughs> something. Yeah, your free, free trial. trial. And yeah, you could, what if is you did it? a Squarespace uh, build, boom. Yeah. Right there. Free ticket. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We tried to get free tickets, but we got, we got shut down. Yeah, I think you got to be like real early. But the thing is, they don't really put out like a call like, hey, we're looking for speakers. No. Like Eric and I could have done a great class on how to do a podcast. In fact, dude, I would be fine doing we that. We could have made it meta. We could have recorded a podcast while I doing our class. That. Yeah, right? So I see we're on the same wavelength. That. Here's my thing. I'm down to do a class. However, I want it to be just like the podcast in that it's free form, but still offers yes. people value. Yes. Yeah. That's hard to do, I think. Agreed. I mean, you, you can just default to like a Q&A style, which I think is, you know, a, a safe way to do it where you're still returning value to people and it's True. Is still free form. Um, but I don't know. I'll, I'll be honest. I don't I'm not going to throw anybody under the bench, but I went to WorkbenchCon three years ago, I think. And seemed like some of the people who were doing presentations, who were speakers there, were just kind of winging it. Yeah. Yeah. And it was not good. It was like, did I pay five, six hundred bucks for this? Like, really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, my whole goal is like I'm going there. Well, one, you know, to, to meet some people I've talked to in person, yeah. hang out, build some good relationships. That's the primary goal. Um, but I also do want to just learn. You could, some of the classes were great, yeah. like legitimately, like you can go and learn a lot, but sometimes it's hit and miss, right? And there were a couple of misses last year that I was a little disappointed with. The one thing that I was honestly kind of blown away about was it's not that I didn't expect it, but I was really thrown off and like kind of like, whoa, was last year I wanted to go. So then I looked into it and I'm like, holy cow, it's $600 just for the yeah. ticket. Then I yeah. got to buy flight. I got to pay for food, drinks. I got to get transportation. I got to get lodging. And I'm like, this is easily a $2,000 endeavor. Yes. Yeah, it is. It really is. And that's why so, we are 
very happy to say that we finally found something valuable to do with our Patreon money. Mm -hmm. Patrons, Mm -hmm. we want to thank you in advance. You guys are the ones sending us to Workbench Don. So we truly appreciate it. Yeah. It's interesting. I guess by the time we get, assuming our Patreon keeps going at the same rate, it doesn't decline. They could probably pay for our airfare there, too, if we wanted. Um, yeah, maybe. Yeah, because we've got a little bit of banked up, but that'll cover the hotel. And yeah. Then, uh, yeah. Yeah. So it'll be, it'll be interesting. But, you know, but um, yeah, we really appreciate it. Every, everyone and, that it joins in wants to send us to WorkbenchCon. Sure, we're going to be hanging out, but we plan on getting a lot of value from that. Yeah. Well, that's OK. So. Our patrons are sending us, right? So yeah. we got to do something for them on the other side. So go 100%. on Patreon. We'll make a little thread on Patreon, but go on there and let us know people that you would like us to just grab at Workbench Conference. We'll abduct them. We'll take them back to our hotel room and we will force True. them to have a podcast with us. <laughs> what Have you seen the new Jeffrey Dahmer show on Netflix? Yeah, what, yeah. What I just finished just like? watching it last week. You just have to watch this movie and then you can go. That's what we're going to tell people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, we're going to tell them we're going to take some photos of them. Nothing weird, just artsy yeah. stuff. <laughs> we're just going to take some photos. Photos. Nothing oh, weird. Oh, man, that was creepy. Uh, Sophie had such a hard time with that show. She wouldn't let me watch it, like, before bed. Yeah, that's what, that's what Miranda said, too. But we did yeah, actually. Yeah, no, I would be like, oh, well, we already watched one episode. Let's just watch another one. She'd be like, no, please can watch The Office. I'm like, no, it's all, I'm sorry. It's already started. Yeah, but then, then you're like 50 minutes into an episode and you're like, oh, I got to finish it. Exactly, exactly. I wanted to watch, um, there's another Netflix documentary um, uh, where they actually have live interviews with a real Jeffrey uh-huh, Dahmer. Uh-huh. And I wanted to watch that to see how good of a job of mimicking the actor did. Oh, Evan, dude, Evan Peters is a phenomenal actor. I mean, he killed it. He's so creepy and like, but I just wanted to see like, he did a great job in that role. How accurate is it to the real Jeffrey Tom? Mm, That's fair. I'm curious. I'm curious. Did you ever get into the American Horror Story series? Uh, I watched the first season and then when they did the second season and it was like a completely new storyline, I kind of just, I was like, oh, okay. So I kind of fell off with it. Yeah. So I'm, how do I talk? Okay. I can talk about it without ruining it. Okay. Okay. You find out later on that all of the seasons are connected. Uh, Oh, that's all I can say. Okay. But so there does become like a cohesive story arc, but every single season is a standalone season. Yeah. Um, You might just miss a couple intricacies of when they talk about things. You're like, oh, that's why that happened or whatever. Mm. But I mean, really, you could just watch whatever season is interesting to you. Yeah. Okay. But that's the same Um, creator, Ryan Murphy. uh, Oh, I was wondering what the tie in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was wondering what the tie in is. So, okay, let's do this. What's your favorite movie genre? Uh, I would say like thriller suspense. Thriller suspense. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. I do love a good thriller yeah. movie. I think I'm more of a comedy guy. I really I enjoy a comedies. good laugh. Yeah. Um, but horror is definitely up there. My my favorite thing, if I'm ever hung over, you can find me on the couch just laying down with a bunch of crappy food and then a horror movie playing. Oof. That's my that's my go to move. OK, so give me <laughs> like a. Uh, Maybe a couple of your favorite horror movies, maybe, uh, you know, whatever. Ooh, what are we talking? That's tough. I do love the Paranormal Activity series. I have not um, seen all those yet. I mean, I don't know that you need to see all of them. It gets okay. a little samey okay. after a while, but the uh, definitely watch the first one if you haven't seen okay. it. Okay. Maybe like the first two or three at most, and then you, you, you kind of get it. But now that I, it's been... 10 years since I saw the first one, 15 years since I saw the first one. I'm still kind of excited when, you know, Paranormal Activity 9 comes out. (laughs) That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. It's uh, Too Fast, Too Paranormal was the ninth one, I think. Oh, my. I hope you're kidding. I am. Okay, good. I was like, oh, God. (laughs) It's like the the Fast and Furious movies, they never die. I Yeah, I dropped off uh, Fast and Furious around, like, number six, I think. Oh, God. I just I couldn't do it anymore. But I got friends who watch it. They say they're amazing. So I don't know. One of my one of my favorite horror series is Saw. 
Oh yeah, Saw's great too. But have you watched all of them? No, just the first few. I think I tried to watch the what was the latest one called Jigsaw, I think. Uh the so there was a newer one that was an unrelated storyline called Spiral that came out like a year ago. Uh, but the, the I the, think I tried to watch that one, but I can't I can't remember. I believe the last installment of the of the first storyline that you're familiar with is called either Jigsaw or like Saw 3D or something like that. I think it's Jigsaw, and I think that's the one I'm thinking of. I did. I have Spiral like downloaded on my computer, ready to watch, but I haven't watched it. Okay, it's unrelated. Okay, okay. But uh, if you've seen all the Saw movies, yeah, the ability for them to tie all these storylines together, like truly, like yeah, sure, sure, it's a super gruesome movie, whatever. Mm -hmm. Get rid of all of that. It's genius the way that they they tie everything together. together. Yeah, I was kind of impressed with that. Like they they because the guy dies and then they have a whole way. Well, I mean, spoiler alert, it's, it's a 20 year old movie. So whatever. Yeah. Like the guy dies and they find a way to like he's got like all these proteges and stuff. And then I think in one of them, he's not really dead and he comes back somehow. I don't know. It's it really it is well done i couldn't write that stuff oh my god no can you imagine like the the web of like okay well like in this movie we said this and this yeah but it's a constant like flashback or like yeah oh you found out that the reason this person was in this spot now was because 15 years ago they were here but they don't tell you that until the seventh movie and then you understand what happened in the second movie like yeah do you think, uh, and I mean, this is a question you can't answer, but do you think they planned it all from the start, from Saw 1? They had this big web and they were just like doing pieces of it? Or do you think it's all like ad hoc after the fact? They're just like trying to find ways to tie them together. I truly have no idea because a lot of them are made by different writers and different directors. Oh, interesting. But you never know. They could have made like they could have started with like some master plan and then kind of like pass it around to different people to make parts of it. Right. Yeah. But with the with the movie industry, like you're putting yeah. out a horror movie. Are you mm-hmm. really going to plan nine movies ahead and just hoping that one through eight just kill it in the box yeah. office? <laughs> right. That seems yeah, bold. that's a good point. It does seem bold. It does seem quite bold. And I'm pretty sure, wasn't there something about the guy who made Saw? It was like like a very like early movie for him. Or maybe I'm thinking of Paranormal Activity. Uh, I know what you're talking about, and I think yeah. you could be right. I know that Saw started out as like basically a short film that was uh-huh. one, of the, one of, I'm pretty sure it was the director's, like one of his very first endeavors into okay. filmmaking. And it like blew up on like the indie scene or something like that. Interesting. Because I know Paranormal Activity, the first one they made with like a $15,000 budget or something like that. Right, right. It was like all filmed with like handy cams, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And just like regular people. I don't think there were any big actors in it or anything. So No, but they killed it in the box office. They brought in like millions and millions and millions of dollars. But yeah, Yeah. (laughs) that's the um, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but horror movies are for whatever reason, like the entry, like I'm trying to think it's like the uh, starter job almost for people in Hollywood. A lot of people, a lot of low budget movies will target horror films for some reason. Huh. I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I, I, I've i asked Miranda this question a lot of time. Would you, How would you feel if somebody just came up to you on the street and basically typecasted you for a character? Like like they were just like, oh, like you'd be great for the pedophile in our new movie. Right. Right. <laughs> or you're a, a beautiful woman and you're like, mm-hmm. oh, you would be – Great for the character who dies first in this horror movie. I would be okay with that. But I like, mean, wouldn't you be like, okay, well now I'm just being like, you know, typecasted for this character or like, Hey, you would be great for the obese guy in this movie. Like I'd be like, yeah. F you. Oh, that sucks. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. So there are some that would be offensive to me. Right. I don't think I wouldn't mind the one where it's like, okay, you're dying. But if somebody was like, you're the ugly nerd, I'd be like, damn it. 
Be like, I know, like, but like, don't tell me. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let me live in the illusion that I'm not, please. <laughs> so you're, what, you're, what you're saying is you're fine being typecast as a character if it's a positive trait. Correct. And also there's a, uh, there's like a continue, there's a weird middle area where I would also be okay. If they were like, you look like the perfect guy to die in the first five minutes of the film. I'd be like, all right, sure. Yeah. As long as my check's big enough. You like, always need that murder <laughs> scene to start things out. Exactly. Right. Oh, SpongeBob making an appearance. Oh yeah. This is why people uh, need to watch the live stream. They go see the SpongeBob mug. What do you got in the SpongeBob mug? <sighs> Can't tell you. Oh, okay. No, it's it's, 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 it's tea. Oh, Nothing okay. Fancy. It's not a uh, it's not chicken broth again this no. time. No, we do. Chicken I stock. do have chicken broth in there, but it's a, a whole four cup thing. Mm-hmm. Not a lot in there. Um. So, I don't know if you you probably have this uh, down in the states, but one of the nice things to come out of COVID was um, grocery stores now do this thing where you can like order online and then collect in store. And I always forget to do it. I hate grocery shopping. I mean, oh, I yeah. love I actually enjoy going and like picking all the foods I'm going to eat throughout the next week. But I hate the time suck that is grocery shopping. So Sophie today went on and like picked out all her stuff online, ordered it. And then I just picked it up on my way back from work. It was fantastic. They had it all ready to go, all boxed up for me. It was nice. I see. That's well, that's one service that I've still never tried. You should go for it. It's well worth it. It's well worth it. I think my grocery store charges $3 in order to like go around and pick everything and box it all up for you. But see, my gripe about that is one, when I go through the grocery store and I Mm -hmm. see those people with those carts and they're blocking the whole effing aisle. Yeah. I'm like, I hate people who are ordering this. Yes. Well, you know what? (laughs) You only... I know, I know, I understand. You only experience that aggravation because you're still in the store, though. I'm, I'm oblivious. I'm at home twiddling my thumbs, you know, but, playing video games. But like, I like to pick my own onions or like pick my own yeah. banana, and I'd be like, ah, oh, damn it, I didn't want that onion. See, I thought at first they would give you all the reject produce, but then I realized they probably won't, and so far they haven't. They've given us pretty good stuff. Because I don't think they want the hassle of people being like, oh, my thing's bad. And then going and getting in line and like like trying to, yeah, trying to do an exchange on the spot. So I think they actually give you pretty good produce most of the time. So let's say you go home and your onion is is rotten. Do you just like go on the app and you're like, hey, this, this, this and this that you gave me were bad. Honestly, I don't know. It's never come up. Okay. Uh, okay. I would I would probably just write. I mean, something low value like an onion. Like, what's an onion? A couple bucks. If that. If that. So it's like eh, at that point, it's not really worth my time to you know drive back to the grocery store and complain about my bad onion. But I guess for us, like ninety five percent of what we're buying is produce and meat. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so like. I'm like, I just, I just don't know if I trust somebody to pick out all my produce. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Fair but enough. I don't know. I'll get, maybe I'll give get, it a get, shot. Yeah, try, try it one time and see, see how it goes for you. I mean, I'll try anything once. Yeah, exactly. Hey, you know, speaking of things, I'll try <laughs> once. So mm-hmm. I often get, um, and you'll get a kick out of this messages, as I'm sure you do too, on Instagram. Hello, dear. <laughs> oh, oh God, it's still going. So I get this message from an account called Mughal Dollis Custom Tool 786. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's always good when there's a number. Oh, at the yeah. End. And so, uh, how can I go? So they send me a message. They're like, Hi, dear. How are you? Are you interested? Oh, did it actually it did it literally start dear. with hey, dear? <laughs> How are you? Are you interested in Damascus knife axe sword? And then I go, yeah, I'm interested in all of them. And they go, nice. Did you see my page? And I said, I sure did. Nice. How do you like Damascus knife sword axe? Love them. Thank you. Do you want to buy me Damascus knife sword and our axe? I said, are you unable to buy it yourself? And they said, yeah. Sir, you tell me which you like knives. I said, well, which one do you want? And they said, what do you mean? 
said, you, I said, you said that you wanted me to buy you one. Yeah. So which one do you want me to buy you? And dude, I, I keep going. I've been going on this. Oh my God. And then they start sending Wait, me uh, oh, I, all I thought of they the were sending... pictures. Oh, wow. And then, but I've been razzing this dude for a week and a half now. And he just keeps <laughs> oh messaging God. me back and just like, I'm just, it's literally just a loop. I said, well, which one do you want? I do enjoy somebody who screws with a spammer. I, I yeah. screw with the people who call all the time. I, as a rule of thumb, I ignore the Instagram ones because there's just too many of them. Yeah, I just felt like letting this guy go for a little while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, totally. How many of the um, verification ones do you get? Oh, all like, hello. The time. Would you like to be verified on Instagram? I've had a couple of them, and they've actually explained their whole system to me. I haven't ad- like they, oh. they just go up front. Like we will seed a bunch of fake articles about you in order to get you verified on Instagram or whatever. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how so, that happens. Like I've tried the thing where like you like submit like, Oh, here's my social. Here's this, here's this, here's this. And they have to, yeah. it's kind of weird. You have to send them a picture of your license. Oh really? Yeah. But every oh, time they're crazy. like, no. So right, then. I don't know. So I think the, I've, I've heard and based on some of these messages that I've got, I think you have to have like a certain number of articles written about you. Like they oh. want to be able to punch your name into Google and have it come up, you know, a bunch of stuff about you, essentially. So what these services do is they just create a bunch of they create a Wikipedia page for you. They create like all the stuff for you. And then uh, and then they submit that to Instagram on your behalf, I believe. But here's the thing. Did I, am I off mute? Can you hear me? Like okay, so I muted because I had to sniffle and I fig- figured people didn't want to hear that. Um, nice. What was I going to say? Oh, here, here's the thing. What does the Instagram checkmark verification thing even mean? Or know. nothing, right? Like It's just exclusive. People want it because most people can't have it. <laughs> I guess. I just don't care. Yeah. I, would, I think it would be really funny to have like a, a big account, like to be like, you know, not even just, you know, social media personality, but to be like a big celebrity and not even have the blue check mark. I think that would be kind of fun. Like deny it. Be like, no, I don't want it. Like, what do you, who do you think is the biggest account without a blue check? Mark? Oh, probably me. Yeah. Well, I guess a lot of those <laughs> meme, <laughs> probably. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you might, you might be up there. I mean, I've definitely seen, I have a few people who, um, like I know on Instagram who were like athletes or something like that in their, yeah. it, like in younger in their career. And, uh, they have the blue check because of that. So, you know, uh, but they don't have like a whole ton of followers. They'll have like, you know, 10,000 followers or something like that. So it's interesting. Hmm. I would try it's to not sell just my a, account to somebody. If I, if I were in that position, yeah. I'd be like, I'll, sell you this blue check mark verified account for one million dollars what would it take you to sell your accounts i mean i probably do a million bucks yeah i probably i don't know i probably do a million bucks yeah i well i mean i would just start zach builds two the next day and just start <laughs> reposting all my old stuff you know like i would just like zach still builds yeah, Zach still builds the real Zach builds, whatever, you know, like I figure it out. <laughs> Here's my thing. And I know we, you know, we've had this discussion of ups and downs, but dude, for me, Instagram has been dead like the last yeah. like month. Yeah. Yeah. Mine's, I had one video pop off that did pretty well for a while, but other than that, it's been it's been pretty tired. I mean, I've been getting like 15, 20,000 views on a video, which I know yeah, for same. a lot of people are like, oh, that's that's amazing. But that's that's horrible for my account. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, I don't know what there's all this like momentum is such a big thing on yeah. all of these social medias. Right. And so your account being offline for however many months yeah, that like was like three or four like months. I, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that counts as like a negative against your account. I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. But it's been a nightmare. But yeah, yeah. Um, I do have to say we threatened last week that we were going to cancel the podcast. Oh yeah, unless it, we d- we unless we 
got um, voice notes. Voice notes. So we did get some voice notes. Do you want to hear oh, one? Thank, thank the Lord. Yeah, of course I do. This always makes me nervous that somebody is going to come in with a bunch of like racial stuff that we have to beat out. <laughs> All right, let's just go for it. This is from <laughs> patron Craig. Oh, well, you got to watch out for Craig. Okay, gentlemen. Very difficult questions today. I missed hearing my voice on here, so I did come back. So, chicken parm or meatball parm? Ooh. Pepperoni pizza or sausage pizza? And the biggest debate on the internet, does pineapple belong on pizza? Go. Okay. 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 So chicken uh, parm versus or me- meatball parm? Meatball parm. parm. Yeah. And what was the middle one? There was pineapple at the end. Um, and what was the pepperoni or sausage? Okay. 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 On pizza. You got you got your you got your answer. I don't know in. if I've ever had meatball parm. I've had a meatball sub. Yeah. Yeah. I just prefer I don't like chicken that much. Unless it's in nugget form, I'm not <laughs> Zach's laughing at me because I'm over here muting my mic (laughs) sniffling so nobody has to hear it. You're muting it and then you're also moving your head away from the microphone. Yeah, I don't know why. It's a natural reaction. Yeah, you're being polite. It's okay. I'm just giving you a hard time. Um, I'm I'm not that big a fan of chicken. I've never really liked that many chicken parms, so I would go meatball parm even though I'm not 100% sure I know what that is. I I tell you what. Workbench con. Let's go find an Italian restaurant. Okay. And let's try it. Yeah. We'll be like, do you have a meatball parm? They'll be like, this is a nice Italian restaurant, sir. Come on. And I'd be like, <laughs> I'm leaving. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, I'd probably go meatball parm. My thing with chicken, a lot of times when you get it at a restaurant, it's mm-hmm. either overcooked, undercooked. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Both of which well, are poor. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, undercooked is dangerous too, yeah. right? So I think that's why so many restaurants err on the side of overcooking. Yeah. But nothing is worse than a dry old hunk of chicken. Like, oh, like man. could use this as a coaster. Yeah. Have you ever done that thing where you brine a chicken before making it? You like soak I it in salt not. water? I've been wanting to. I haven't either, but I've been wanting to do it for a while. Sophie and I went to this restaurant a couple of weeks ago and had uh, it was like a rotisserie place. And I was like, this is the moistest chicken that I've ever had before. And so I went home and I was like, how do you make a nice moist chicken? And yeah. Every article I read was like, you, you got to brine it, huh. like, brine it for a day before cooking it. It's your favorite part so. of the breast. Uh, I'm a dark meat guy. OK, OK. Yeah. 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 That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. So I did a meatball parm, uh, pepperoni or sausage on a pizza. We've had this discussion. Pepperoni, yeah. bacon, yeah. banana peppers. Yeah. 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 A little bit extra cheese if possible. Yeah. Oh, extra cheese for sure. Um, pineapple on pizza? No. Oh, okay. I'll do it. I like. I, mean, I like pineapple on pizza. Zach, if I come over, I show up to your house, and you're like, "Hey, I got us some pizzas, dude." No yeah. matter what you put on the pizza, I'm gonna eat it. Yes. But am I going to order a pineapple? Yeah, pizza? you're the one. You're in the driver's seat ordering the pizza. You would never put no pineapple on it. Okay. No. I do sometimes. Depending on the mood I'm in, I will often throw a little bit. I like a good Hawaiian pizza, you know, pepperoni, okay. ham, yeah, and, the, uh, pineapple. I, I guess the one exception would be like we've got this brewery that I like going to that mm-hmm. they do a bunch of like weird kind of like non-traditional foods. Yeah. So like their pizzas have a bunch of just wild stuff on them. And I might be like, oh, I might get the pineapple one. Yeah, yeah give it a shot. But I'm not going to get like a pineapple pizza from like – Dominoes or something like that. Okay, okay, okay. Well, you and I are different there. I'll I'll keep that in mind for when we're at workbench conference. We won't get any pineapple pizza. All right. Well, you want to hit another voice <laughs> question? Yeah, th- yeah. Let's we do it. another one. This is from Mark Alms. He was the one I I, I told you that we weren't going to get any questions unless it was from him. Here we go. Okay. He did not disappoint. Hey guys, Mark Alms calling in here. Since you threatened everybody last week and said you wouldn't record another podcast <laughs> unless you got a voice memo, I figured I'd call in. And Eric, you said you bet it be me and you like my voice, so uh, hey, appreciate you. Anyway, question is, have you two had any brand partnerships or sponsorship deals that you pursued but didn't end up getting and didn't end up working out in the past? Oh, oh yeah. Uh, looking back on oh, it, what yeah. was that experience like and would you do anything differently looking back on it? Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Take care. It's a fantastic question. Yeah, that is a good question. 
Uh, do you want to do you want to leave? You seem like you had maybe something top of mind. Um, well, first off, I think this covers both of us. We say no to the yeah. overwhelming majority of deals yes. that get presented to us. Yeah. Yeah. I would say of, of every I mean, actually, 10 that get proposed to me, I'm saying no to eight or nine of them. I don't even say no most of the time. I just ignore the emails. Oh, yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but have you had any that you were excited for, but then just didn't work out for various reasons? Or like ones that you were like, yeah, I'm game to do that. And then at the last minute, they were like, man, eh, now. I've had some. I can't think of any specific brands off the top of my head. But I've had some where like we've gotten in kind of a, a talk about, hey, they want to do this. I'm interested in doing this. Here are some kind of deliverables. Um and then we talk about budget and there and I'm just like, oh, no way yeah, am I doing that, that happens quite a bit. People ask you, you you invest so much time yeah. into like figuring out what they want, how you're going to do yeah. it. They'll like ask for concepts. And then the budget is like the last thing you talk about and you're way off. And it's like, oh, I just wasted like so many hours going back and forth on that. That's happened to me a few yeah. times. And now I kind of feel people out early on, like make sure we're in the same ballpark before we get into all that other stuff. 100%. The, yeah. the question that I almost always respond back to when I f first get my, the, the, I guess the, the way a lot of these proposals go, um, a brand reached out to you. They're like, hey, you know, we've saw you on whatever, whatever, whatever. We have this product, ABC. We're really interested in working um, with you on a promotion. Would you be interested in that? I almost always respond with, um, if I've heard of their product, yeah, you know, I've heard of product ABC. Can you give me an idea of what your budget is so that I can better assess what I'm able to offer you for this promotion? Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. And because it's not, you're not saying how much. But I just respond dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign, question, question mark. mark. And then one of like <laughs> yeah. the hands up emoji. Like, <laughs> yeah, the, huh? yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you need to do that because if let's say a brand is like, I know we'll just be candid here. If a brand comes up to me and they're like, Hey, we really want you to do an Instagram promotion. And they're like, we just want you to do like a, like a, you know, a, a one reel. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, I love your product or whatever. And we get down to the nuts and bolts and they're like, okay, uh, yeah, yeah. Can we have it done by November 2nd and we'll pay you $250. I'm like, no, yeah. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah. It's. I think we've talked about it before. Like some people I would, I think might hear that number and be like, Oh yeah, I would do a little like one minute video for 250 bucks. Nope. But you also have to remember, Oh, I think our live stream might've just gone down. Uh Oh, uh Oh, uh, -oh. uh yeah, it's frozen. Uh Oh, I don't know if there's mine. So mine says it's still working. Yeah. Okay. All right. Maybe it's just my computer being weird. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. Yeah. Whatever. Um, so, what was I saying? I think a lot of people hear that and they're like, oh, yeah, it's, you know, I do a one minute video for 250 bucks, but it's not really just creating a one minute video. It's all the stuff yeah. that goes into it, all the planning, all the approval. It's it's more of a rigmarole than you might think. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, that, that has happened to me quite a few times. What happened to me a couple times over the summer was I had, you know, companies that I agreed to partner with we had figured out the deliverables we had hammered out a budget and then when it came time to send a contract over they just pulled out at the last minute so that happened that to too. me yeah like two or three times now which is uh which was kind of interesting um but it's i don't know it's uh it's sometimes it's a mixed blessing because honestly half of the time i'm I'm just as happy to not get the work as I am to get the work because I would yeah. much rather just work on my own projects if given the opportunity. So, and I think that's kind of something we've talked about in the past is you, we don't need these sponsors. You don't yes. want to be in the position where you need them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because then you get screwed over. Yeah, you really do. If you, you yeah. 
it's uh, it's good to be independent, right? Mm-hmm. Like I think that's true in our business and in every business, but you need to be able to walk away from any deal at any point. You can't bet the house on some of these things because a lot of times the partnerships don't go the way you want them to go. And then you're miserable. You're like, Oh, like, I mean, Timberland okay. pro. Holy I was going to, okay. I, I can say the, I can say Timberland pro 19 um, days, 20 days remaining. There's 31 days in October, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So, <laughs> It's uh, it can be really demoralizing to have to do a job that you don't really want to do. I mean, I, I'm sure anybody who's worked a crappy job understands that. But the reason I think you and I got into this content thing is because we kind of wanted to do our own thing and decide, sure. you know, be a little bit more in control of our own destiny. And you, you do lose a little bit of that with every job that you do. So sometimes it's nice when it doesn't work out. It's like when you're really busy and somebody cancels like a dinner date on you, you're like, oh, yeah, like just a night to sit home and like do what I wanted to do anyways. Exactly. And yeah, this is one thing that like I heard people talk about when I was first getting started. I, you know, listen to other people and they're like, don't take sponsors early on. And yeah, I was like, you're yeah. crazy. Somebody says they want to give me a hundred bucks to do this. I'm genuinely telling you as somebody who made the mistake of going in, making that mistake of only getting paid a hundred dollars to do something. As soon as yeah. I completed that, I was like, that was the worst decision I have ever made. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've been there many times myself. It's flattering at first, right? You're it like, is. Oh, somebody's willing to give me money in order to, you know, like promote their product or something like that. But it's, it's just not worth it. it no. When you get down to like evaluate it on like an hourly rate basis and you're like, Oh yeah, I just did. I just, you know, like poured myself out online for the equivalent of $15 an hour. Yeah. It's like not worth it. Yeah. And we all know those accounts where it's just like every single time, tag this brain, tag, tag this brain, tag this brain, add, add, add. Like, add, add. you're killing yeah. me, man. I don't want to. And that, that hurts. That like hurts your performance on the platform too. Because <laughs> yeah. if you're doing ads all the time, people aren't going to keep following you. It's going to hurt your growth and it's going to hurt your you know future growth essentially. Yeah. So yeah. it kind of he- it kind of delays you from actually getting those bigger paydays down the road. Oh, 100%. Let's see. We got one. Final uh, got another voice question. Voice. We got three. Wow. We should threaten to go on strike all the time. I know. <laughs> this one is from, which by the way, I almost forgot about this. <laughs> we don't have any new patrons. Oh, but we do have our returning top tier patrons. Yeah. So we have our cockers. You remember mm-hmm. our cockers? Corey Duvall. Right? Yeah. Or am I screwing this up already? Oh, okay. Come on. <laughs> the original. Oh my God. Okay, I know our power cocker. Yes, our original. Oh God. Come on. Why is my You're brain killing like me? This? It's Scott Eastman in it. East East Oh, Woodshop. Scott Eastman. Yeah. God damn. You got to send him a windbreaker or something for all this. I know. I will send him a windbreaker. Can I do our power cocker? Oh yeah. It's Wes Wheeler. Yeah, it is. And our power yeah. cocker uh, sent a message in. He said oh. a question about barbecue sauce. Oh. Okay, let's okay. go for it. Okay. Hey, it's Wes. I was sitting here working and out of the ADHD middle of nowhere thought, I wonder what kind of barbecue sauce Zach and Eric prefer. Okay. They like sweet? More of a smoky? Spicy? I don't know. So I thought I'd ask. And what's your favorite thing to put barbecue sauce on? That's all. Easy. Have a good day. Well, first off, how polite. Have a good yeah. day. I appreciate mm-hmm. that. That's our patrons through and through. They are all extremely right. nice and polite. Sending us the workbench con, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So barbecue sauce. Hit me, Zach. Okay. Uh, I like both a sweet and smoky mm-hmm. barbecue mm-hmm. sauce. Uh, I like sweet baby rays. You ever had oh, sweet baby rays? That is the quintessential go-to just... Anytime, boom, grabbing Sweet Baby Rays. Okay, good. I'm glad we're on the same page on that front. And then what's your favorite thing to put it on? Are we keeping it podcast appropriate? (laughs) (laughs) I'll save that one for Uh, later. That'll be, we'll we'll share what I do with barbecue sauce in the after show. (laughs) 
Is that a tie into the Jeffrey Dahmer conversation from earlier? Perhaps. Um, <laughs> that's really why I got kicked off Instagram. Yeah, no kidding. Um, no. B- favorite thing to put barbecue sauce on? Barbecue. You know? Wow. Well, yeah, but like, give a little more specific. Are we talking like chicken? Yeah. Are we talking brisket? Yeah. yeah I'd, say, brisket, I'd say brisket chicken. or pulled pork. Okay. Okay. I go, I'm a rib guy. I like a... I like Oof, some good ribs. Some good ribs. Yeah. You think yeah. they'll have any good ribs in Atlanta? They better. They better. I got from uh, last year, I have a couple friends who live in Atlanta. Okay. Uh, so I'll ask them and see see what's up. We got to find some we, good food spots. Yeah. Because yeah. people see, the podcast listeners seem to be very interested and intrigued in the food scene. Well, I mean, we do start every episode with the food of the day. So That's we fair. have made food like an integral part of the part of the show. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, love me some good barbecue. The only problem with, not the only problem, the one sauce that I still can't get on board with are like the vinegar based sauces. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you on that. I don't really care too much for, I don't even really care that much for salt and vinegar chips. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. Some, not for me. But uh, the vinegar sauces are the typical like St. Louis sauces, right? Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're not going uh, to St. Louis, so we're, we're in the clear. Do you have St. Louis, uh, like, is that a wing restaurant in, do you have any of those in Columbus? No? Okay. There's a bunch of them here in Toronto. I wasn't sure if it was a international thing or it's like strictly a Toronto brand. I want to, uh, I'm not familiar with it, but I do want to air a grievance about a Toronto restaurant. Oh, okay. So this was, oh my God, probably 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. The Wayne Gretzky restaurant in downtown Toronto is absolute dog shit. I'll we'll Dude, just, it, we'll put the explicit. That's 46 minutes in, but I'll take it. <laughs> it coasts on the name alone. And actually, you know what? I was walking by there yesterday, and I'm pretty sure it's gone. So I think Thank it closed down. God. Actually, yeah, I'm going to look that up. But uh, he, yeah, he had, a, he's got a winery too, Gretzky. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, like, Gretzky, I feel like that's a pretty good thing. You just slap your name on it and you're good to go. Yeah, here we go. Gretzky's Wayne Gretzky's restaurant, three point eight stars, permanently closed. Thank heavens, because <laughs> it was a horrible. Re- the food was god awful. I'm sure it was expensive as all hell. Too. It was almost like a TGI Fridays kind of food, yeah, but like worse. Yeah, yeah, or like really a Chili's. I don't know that I ever actually ate there, but I um, I walked by it all the time because I used to live in that area. Awful. It just didn't never appealed to me. You know what else that I had that was uh, horrible and didn't live up to the expectations? Bees. Never had Applebee's. No, you're not missing anything. We don't we don't have those up here. Um, I went to Wahlburgers, Mark Wahlberg's Burger Place. We haven't tried it yet. Yeah, we we have one in the Toronto airport, so maybe it's like lower quality okay, because okay. it's in the airport, but not good. Not good. I had airport Chipotle when we went on vacation oh, yeah. and it was not yeah. good. So it could have been the, the airport. You got to like put like a, a minus 10 percent modifier on any food you get at the airport. Right. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> we're not going to have to get airport food since we're flying direct either. That's true. Because there's true. nothing worse than having that layover. You're like, I'm going to go to the airport bar. You spend $17 on a Bud Light. And you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> shouldn't have done <laughs> this. this. A, I made too many mistakes. Yeah. Speaking. I am looking forward. Oh, go ahead. No, go, no, ahead. go for it. What are you looking forward I, to? I was just going to say, being in the U.S., the alcohol is usually considerably cheaper than up here in Canada. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm just looking forward to check it out and see what's going on down there. Never been. Mm-hmm. Never mm-hmm. been. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. I got something I've had on the list for a while that we've never talked about. Have you heard yeah. of these new one atom thin finishes that people are using? No, but that smells like snake oil. To That's me. what I thought. So the, I guess there's this one new, atom thin. Yeah, there's this new, uh, new stuff called, and this is not sponsored in any way, shape or form. I've never touched okay. it. It's called okay. car- carbon coat or carbon method or carbon something. Code. Okay. So the idea, Look at this up. The, the idea of it is it's supposed to be like you're probably more f- familiar with like car coatings instead of waxing. Sure. Yes. It's a ceramic uh, coating. 
That I have done on both my cars. I've got the ceramic coating on those. Okay. And thoughts, opinions? What do we think? Um, so I, you know, I've always kind of thought that uh, a wax is a wax is a wax. It basically just makes your car shiny okay. a little bit longer because it like, you know, you ever put like rain X on your windshield? Mm-hmm. So it, you have to like think. Yeah, we'll think about a ceramic coating like rain X, but for your whole car. Like, you know, I don't really think it makes it that much glossier, but it does keep it looking cleaner longer because stuff slides off it. Okay. Um, have you ever seen the YouTube channel Project Farm? I have. The name I think sounds I've, familiar. I think I've maybe even mentioned it on the podcast before, but basically this guy compares various consumer products. He does a lot of power tools and uh, like construction related stuff, but he did an episode where they did. He compared car waxes. He just like taped off different sections of the hood of his car and then put like different finishes on each little grid and then like torture tested them like he. So he like power washed them. He like spilled gasoline on them. He did all these different things. And the one that performed the best for the longest was a ceramic coating. Okay. And so I was like, okay, I'm both. I'm just going to go get that then. Yeah. (laughs) So I guess the idea is like people are putting this ceramic coating stuff like on their cast iron surfaces, on their table saws and stuff. Uh, oh, I could see that potentially working. I could see that being relatively real. Because, you know, like all of us, we typically just throw some paste wax on there, keep things smooth, keep rust off of it or whatnot. Yeah. A couple people are like sworn by it, say it's really good. So I don't know. I I bet that would work. I, I just call bullshit on. We're already into the explicit, right? So yeah, I call yeah. bullshit on the uh, the fact that it's one atom thick. But I think ceramic coatings are not complete BS. Some of them probably are, but some of them are decent. Here's my question, though, is if it I, truly is one atom thin, mm-hmm. what happens if you like scratch it? it? Are you splitting yeah. an atom? <laughs> No, you're I think just you're gonna pushing the atoms aside. <laughs> for, forget the people that think that your dust collection thing is gonna blow up if it gets dust inside of it. Oh, yeah, we're now yeah. we're now talking about exploding your workshop from splitting the atom. An atom, yeah, that's true. You have a nuclear chain reaction start happening inside your shop. <laughs> you might actually solve the energy crisis by <laughs> scratching your table saw next time. Didn't we have a whole, uh, didn't we have an episode where we solved the energy crisis? We have an episode where we take on big oil. Okay. That was when I mean, we were I, talking about how all the, the, the gas grades are a scam, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Okay. Yeah. I couldn't remember why we, where we came up with that, why we had that title, but that's exactly it. Isn't there a, a always sunny in Philadelphia episode that's it's called solve the I energy crisis or something? Maybe, maybe. I got to watch somebody told I was talking to my buddy on the weekend and he said that they're still making new episodes always sunny in Philadelphia. Are you serious? Yeah. He said they're still going and they never stopped. So I must be like 10 seasons behind. Okay. I mean, it was a great show. I just, yeah, I just stopped, stopped watching it. But, um, let's see, let's hit it. We had a question for the end and then we'll get into the after show. Okay. Yeah. We, we were light on questions, I guess. Although we did do the, the phone in one. So, that counts. There's some questions in here that I think we'll have some really good dialogue on, but I do want to send. Okay. I do want to save those for the after, after show because I think we'll really dive into it. But I'll give a tease for anybody mm-hmm. if you're interested in more like behind the scenes, nuts and bolts, really detailed stuff about content creation. Yeah. We got some questions for you. We got some questions okay. for you. Yeah, it's nice in the after because in the main show, you know, you you kind of worry like, oh, maybe a sponsor will hear me talking crap about them in the after show oh we'll let go we'll let go we got we got we're no holds barred in the after show no um can i also make a quick plug for the discord server oh absolutely yeah so brock uh brock got me in there uh so i've been chatting with the guys haven't seen you around in the discord server i gotta say i i don't even know how to use it yeah, well, we'll we'll figure that out. And I also want to set it up so that anybody can join. It's for patrons only right okay. now. But I think what I'd like to do is have like an exclusive area for patrons. Sure. And then just a normal area because I think it'd be a good venue for people to submit questions. Sure. Yeah. Whatever. I'm down. Okay. Sweet. Sweet. Set that up. Let me know. Okay. 
All right. All right. Corey Duvall to wants s- to know, what's the next hockey game you're going to, and what price do you normally pay for seats? Okay. <laughs> I don't even know when the next hockey game I would go to is because uh, Toronto Maple Leaf tickets are so expensive. Really? So expensive. Yeah. I know. You wouldn't know it from their performance. Right. But the Maple Leafs are... The I'm pretty sure they are. What, what's the word I'm looking? For? They make the most money of any mm. team in the league. Okay. Yeah. So is it is it like impossible to get tickets too? Well, okay. Here, let me look up. I'll I'll find you. Okay. So. All right. While you're looking up, um, yeah. yeah. My answer is I don't know. Um, typically, me going to a hockey game is like a Tuesday night. Somebody be like, hey. Want to go to the game on Saturday? And we go, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I pay because I have a student ID from college that I haven't gotten rid of because it does not have a date on it. I still have mm-hmm. my student ID for college. I can get into the lower bowl Blue Jackets tickets $25. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, then you're probably going to find this pretty funny then. So nosebleed seats for a Toronto Maple Leafs uh, start a- about 130 bucks, and you oh. are all the way you are all the way at the back. Here's the little seating chart. Like you're you you're making sure the walls don't fall in. Yeah, exactly. You're holding up the stadium back there, and that's on Ticketmaster too. That's not like a StubHub reseller that's nope. got a bajillion nope. dollar and, up charge. Okay, and then if you want to be down in the lower bowl. Where you're closer to the action, tickets start at four hundred and eighty-five dollars. No. no, no. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing: like, I enjoy watching a hockey game. Like, I enjoy watching some college football. Sports doesn't mean that much to me. Yeah, yeah. I don't get too. Uh, I'll go. I'll, I'll go as like a a social thing. Like, if a bunch of my friends are like, "Hey, we're going to the game," I will go and watch, or sure. I'll even go to a bar and watch like big games, big playoff sure. games with my buddies. I have zero emotional investment in the normal season. No, I would much rather play the sport than I would watch somebody else play. Right. So the yeah. thing that blows my mind is people like they'll go to like the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. And they'll pay oh, thousands man. and thousands of Absolutely. dollars for a ticket. I'm like, yeah. how does that Why? how is that that important to you? I guess it's just one. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't get it. I, yeah, there, I, there's no real analog for me. So, yeah, I can't think of anything that I would pay thousands and thousands of dollars to go see. Even concerts like some of my favorite bands. As soon as the ticket starts to get above like 100 bucks, You're like, yeah. Like, yeah. So, no, I'm the same yeah. way, dude. We went – the most I've ever paid for concert tickets, and I I, don't, I might have told the story, is when Taylor Swift came. Oh, dude, okay. I was – T-Swift. Pumped to see Taylor Swift. And she was doing like mega arenas. So she was hitting up yeah. like outdoor football venues that are like 100,000 people, right? Wow. Um, and still expensive. Yeah. I mean, I guess – I was expensive, lower so. bowl. I would say like in the bottom third – Fairly mm-hmm. close to the stage. Our tickets mm-hmm. were $500 a piece, face value. Ooh. But That's so I bought meatball. four of them. Ooh, okay. And I sold two. Oh. That was the whole okay. plan because I knew this was going to be a banana show to get tickets for. Yes, yes. I That's smart. sold those two tickets and made up the cost of my tickets plus. Okay. Getting food and drinks that night. I kind of okay, felt like I support a dick, that. but like, mm, nah. that's business, man. It's, yeah, exactly. So I went for free. I uh, I guess actually the most expensive concert that I went to was Rage Against the Machines. Oh, yeah. And that was like only a couple months ago, too. They did their big reunion tour. So I had tickets to that pre-COVID and it got canceled because of COVID. Yeah. Um, and they delayed it like two years. They kept pushing it back. Like, okay, we'll do it next year. Ah, we'll do it next year. And it finally, finally got to see it. And I did think like, should I sell this ticket? Cause I'm sure it's worth a heck of a lot more now, but I, I went with like 10 of my buddies. So good show though. It, yeah. 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 Oh, are you a, are you a blink 182 fan by chance? Not a 
big one. I mean, I like I know the songs yeah. I, and I like them a lot when I was younger, but I haven't really kept up. They just announced that they're doing a, a, a world tour and their lead singer, um, Tom DeLong, the one that was obsessed with aliens, is finally yeah. getting back in the band. Oh, OK. I mean, if tickets were sub a hundred dollars for that i would probably go right right yeah. we got burned play. by them so many times we bought tickets for them like six times in a row in columbus and they canceled yeah. every single time oh that's brutal yeah i don't know if artists appreciate how much of a like a gut punch it is when your concert gets canceled they said it was health issues which like i get mm. but it's it's mm-hmm. it's frustrating to get burned literally six times in a row that they came to columbus well, that's how I felt with Rage, right? Like right. it was, I think it was rescheduled three times. I because think. of COVID. Yeah. 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 Which I get that. I get that. I was like, no, I'd risk it. Let's just go. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah to go for it. March 2020. Let's go. Let's do this concert, everybody. Speaking of going for it, what do you say we uh, gas up the go concert tickets and uh, head over to the after show? <laughs> okay. Yes. But you can buy your ticket for the after show by clicking that link down in the description below it. Or go to mm-hmm. patreon.com slash off the cut podcast. Mm-hmm. And it's much less expensive than $100. It, yeah, way less expensive than $100. And you support us by sending us to uh, workbench cuts. We can yep. make even more value for you. Exactly. Um, <coughs> send us eat. Oh, yeah, that was a black Didn't mute that pop. one. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, oh, yeah. Send us emails at off the cut podcast at gmail.com. You can DM us. Messages. How else can they send us? They can send us voice notes on Anchor. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah all those yeah. things. They know how to do it. They just don't. Okay. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> they just like to hear us ramble on about stuff. I guess we just got to threaten to go on strike if we want more questions. So I do like the food related, like the would you rather type of. Uh, I, I love a good would you rather question. Yeah, me too. Me too. So send us some would you rathers. If you don't have any woodworking or building questions, just. Hit us with the would you rather. So. All right. Well, that sounds good, everybody. We will see you next week or over at the after show. Sure will. See you, everybody. See ya.